الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Throughout our discussion within interpretation, commentary of the Holy Quran Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to be amongst the teachings of Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and diving into the ocean of the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and Quran Within the past four episodes, we had some introductions of how should we approach the Holy Quran and that we are in need of uh, interpretations of Quran based upon the narrations of Ahlul Bayt والسلام, and we, ha we are going to emphasize that again we should only read not only we should read those interpretations that are based upon the teachings and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt and that is and not is and that is not based upon people's understanding of the Holy Quran because as we mentioned within the first couple of episodes we have been uh, forbidden by Ahl al-Bayt to interpret the Holy Quran by our own understanding so inshallah we want to start starting the Quran we have uh, narrations from Ahl al-Bayt and the verses of Quran that before recitation of the Holy Quran we should seek protection of Allah against the outcast Satan where we read chapter 16 verse 98 where Allah says A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ when you recite the Quran seek the protection of Allah against the outcast Satan so and we have narrations that Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi anytime that he wanted to recite the Holy Quran he would recite uh, this verse A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem and then he will uh, continue with the recitation of the rest of the verses of the Holy Quran why is it? because we should when we feel danger we seek protection when there is no danger we don't seek protection when we feel that something might harm us we try to take protection to not be harmed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's mentioning when you recite the Quran we can understand different interpretation has been given by different uh, interpreters that why we are in need and we should recite Quran starting with Billah, saying Billah min shaitan rajeem seeking protection of Allah against the outcast Satan number one when we approach Quran we have to purify our heart and our nafs and our soul so when we read Quran we can receive the light of the guidance of the Holy Quran I'll give you an example when we have a mirror and we want to see ourselves in the mirror if it's dusty we won't be able to see ourselves first we have to cleanse it we have to remove it remove the dust in order for us to see ourselves in the mirror same thing for the Quran in order for Quran to guide us and if you remember within the previous episode we said we have to place Quran in front of us and let the Quran to lead us to take us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to heaven so when we read Quran we should not come and read Quran with some preconcepted ideas and some have some and have some perspectives of this is what I want to learn from Quran and I can see Quran only from this angle no I'm purifying my heart I'm submitting myself to the Quran, leaving, leaving Quran, letting Quran to guide me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the right path. So that's, we should recite Awadhu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajeem at the beginning of Quran. Some interpreters say that we should recite it at the beginning of the Quran. Some came and they said we understand Quran is that throughout the reading of Quran, while reciting, we have to re keep reminding ourselves that we need protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we're being guided. Quran guides us. Quran guides us to the right path. So we know that we have our number one enemy to be shaitan. He swore to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will come from our right and left and the front and the back and he will try 
his best to deviate us from the right path. So when we are in, in the uh, process of reciting Quran and we are reciting Quran, don't you think Quran will, uh, shaitan will try to attack us from everywhere possible to make our mind go away, to not understand the Quran, to not be guided by the Holy Quran? Definitely. So before reciting Quran, and while we're reciting Quran, we need protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to seek the protection of Allah against the outcast Satan. We have to keep reminding ourselves, Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, I feel in danger. We should feel in danger of shaitan trying to deviate us every minute of our life. Every second of our life. We should not think, okay, one day, alhamdulillah, shaitan is taking a rest. It's Saturday, it's Friday, it's Sunday. Well, I have reached the age of 50, 60. Shaitan leaves, left me alone. No, he doesn't. Shaitan promised. He says, فَبَعَزَّتِكَ He swore to Allah's honor and dignity. لَأَغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ I will deviate them all except the rest of the verse. So we should feel this danger that he is trying to deviate us as much as possible. He's putting his best effort. So while we're reading Quran, Quran is guiding us, Quran is leading us, inshallah, we are leading Quran in the front to lead us. Shaitan come from right and left. So we need, while we recite Quran, to seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So before we recite, for purification, we need to seek protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for purification. While we recite Quran, so we make sure to get guidance from the Quran and we won't be deviated. Because Quran said, these, these, there are people, if you remember within the previous episode, there are, we read that, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَحَ مِنْهُ ابْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِهِ Allah says, it is he who has sent down to you the book. Parts of it are definitive verses, which are the mothers of the book while others are metaphorical. As for those in whose heart is deviance, they pursue what is metaphorical in it, courting temptation and courting its interpretation. So when we read Quran, if we have not seek protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, within, while we recite Quran, we might see a verse that we think, okay, well, I'm going to act upon this verse, not knowing that this verse might be mutashabih are metaphorical. And I start acting about it and shaitan says, okay, no, these are muhkamat, these are definitive. So we are in need of Allah's protection while, before, while, and after recitation of the Holy Quran. That is why Quran says, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعْذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ When you recite the Quran, seek the protection of Allah against the outcast Satan. So we will not be confused. We will not be misguided, not understanding the Quran, not understanding the verses of the Quran and ha coming with our own perception to the Holy Quran. The Quran says the same Quran can increase deviance to the disbelievers. And after recitation of the Holy Quran, we need the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan. We came with a purified heart. We read, A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajeem, beginning of Qur'an. We recited. So we purified our heart. We came to Qur'an. While reciting Qur'an, we have in mind, A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajeem is not only something that we say verbally, A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajeem, continue. No. It has to come and to be in us. We have to believe that we are in danger and we are in need of Allah's protection. This has to become part of our belief. If we don't feel in danger of shaitan's deviation, we say, A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajeem, and we move on. But if it comes part of our belief, we will take it seriously. Oh Allah, in every minute of my life, I need your help. Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, I need to be under your protection every second of my life. Oh Allah, don't, let, don't leave me alone, even a glance of an eye. So, we came with a purified heart. Good. Guide, start guiding us. While we're reading Quran, inshallah, we are reading it with a purified heart and we don't come to it with, a, uh, with our perception that this is what I want to gain from Quran to back our, my point of view and my argument. We don't have that mindset. 
after recitation of Quran, we finish Sadaqallahu Ali al we put it aside, we make sure what we have read, we make sure what we have understood to stay with us and for us to be able to act upon those verses. Not only we take the Quran, read it, and then leave it, don't understand it, what it, mean, what it meant, what it want us to do, and what was the action plan of the Holy Quran for you and I. So, فَقُلْ فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعَذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Before, while, and after, we should seek the protection of Allah against the outcast. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we come to Surah Al-Hamd. Before getting to the Bismillah, the first verse of the Holy Quran, we talked a little bit about, inshallah, talk about the, uh, the chapter itself and its, its importance. Chapter 15, verse 87, where Allah says, وَلَقَدْ <laughs> Certainly, we have given you the seven oft-repeated verses and the great Quran. We need to think a little bit. Ponder. Allah says, وَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ That's one of the names of Surah Al-Hamd. Surah Al-Hamd, one of the names of it is Al-Hamd. سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ Another name. أُمُّ Quran, Another uh, name. أُمُّ Kitab, Another name. Has different names, this chapter. Has different names. Allah says, We certainly have given you the seven oft-repeated verses on one hand and the great Qur'an, he placed it next to one another. How much value Surah Al-Hamd has. That Allah brought it as an equal to the Holy Qur'an completely. So on one scale, Surah Al-Hamd and on the other scale, the whole Qur'an. How much value this Surah has. And we have to pay attention to its meaning and inshallah you will see we definitely have to spend good amount of maybe at least five or six or even seven episodes about, it might go more, about this chapter. How much lessons we can learn, how much action plan we can get from this uh, chapter. A narration from uh, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, which also shows us the importance of this chapter. Where Rasulullah says, Le Jabir, Ya Jabir. أَلَا أُعَلِّمُكَ أَفْضَلَ سُورَةٍ أَنْزَلَهَ اللَّهِ فِي كِتَابِهِ The Holy Prophet asks Jabir, one of his companions, Do you want me to teach you the best, the greatest chapter that Allah has revealed in His Holy Book? فَقَالَ جَابِرْ بَلَا بِأَبِي أَنْتَ وَأَمِّي Yes, please. Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah tell him, فَعَلَّمَهُ الْحَمْدُ فَعَلَّمَهُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ Rasulullah taught him Surah Al-Hamd to be the greatest chapter revealed within the Holy Qur'an. ثُمَّ قَالْ لَهُ يَا جَابِرْ And the rest of the hadith where he says, هي is a lengthy hadith, هي شفاء من كل داء إلا السام يعني الموت. You can get cure by recitation of Surah Al-Hamd from every illness and diseases except death if one believes in it and with sincerity and he has removed all the obstacles obstacles for the acceptance of the dua and acceptance of the recitation and acceptance of the recitation of the holy quran rasulullah says it can cure every illness except death how much importance how much value this chapter has Surah Al-Hamd. And also, another name that has been mentioned, Ummul Kitab. So, Sab'an sab Min Al-Mathani, one of the names. Ummul Kitab, another. Ummul Kitab. Why it's been mentioned as Ummul Kitab? Or Ummul Quran? Because in this chapter, we read some, some of the verses talks about oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole Quran is either about oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or it's about the Day of Judgment, or is about Allah's attributes, or about guidance or misguidance, and who to follow and who not to follow. All of this has been summarized within this seven verses of the Holy Quran. So some is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unity of Allah, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and His attributes. And the second part is also that discusses about Qiyamah, the Day of Judgment, Malik Yawm al 
and also talks about guidance and misguidance and the disbelievers. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and all merciful, all beneficent. So discussion comes that uh, Rasulullah says, Ummul Kitab. Kitab, the definition of Kitab means something that has two covers and there are papers in the middle of it. So when Rasulullah discusses Ummul Kitab and during the time of the Prophet they used to call this also Ummul Kitab, it, it, what we can conclude that during the life of the Prophet or Fatihatul Kitab, during the time of the Prophet, the book of Quran was compiled as a book. When Rasulullah calls it Fatihatul Kitab within our Ahadith or Ummul Kitab, Kitab has the definition of a book. It's not a leaflet, it's not skins, it's not pages. No, Kitab, which is very, very important. This is part of our belief, us as a 12 verse, Shia, inshallah of Ahl al-Bayt we believe that Quran was compiled and put together during the time of the Prophet. We have a hadith where Amir al-Mu'min, the commander of the faithful, sa uh, stated that I used to, Rasulullah used to tell me, put this verse here, put this verse here, this chapter here, this chapter here, this verse here, and Rasulullah was the one who ordered and taught Rasul Amir al-Mu'min, the commander of the faithful, where the Quran needs to, how it needs to be compiled and how it should be of his Fatihatul Kitab, this Surah Al Hamd was not the first chapter which was revealed to the Holy Prophet. Surah Al Alaq, verses of the chapter of Alaq, was the one uh, who, I mean, which was revealed upon Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa So the Book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was compiled during the time of Rasulullah. And we have discussion, inshallah, within this uh, topic, inshallah. We will leave it to the next episode. We will conclude uh, with the most important. Dua that we should remember, and that will be inshallah to ask Allah, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi Ajalallah ta'ala faraj al sharif Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih Fi hadhih sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'a Waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna Hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila Barahmatika ya arhamar rahimin